Hello, and welcome back to the next iteration of our player spotlights. Um, I am the Sky12321, otherwise known as Ming549 on Smogon, and today I am joined with LPZ from the Deranged Hustlers. So, LPZ, do you want to just do a little quick introduction about yourself? Hello, yo. Um, LPZ, then? That's about it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, first off, you know, let's just like hop right into it. Uh, the season, how has it gone? Uh, Deranged Hustlers have, well, at the time that we're recording this, they've, they've clinched playoff spots after uh, six weeks. And yeah, we're in week seven. So how's it been? How's the season gone for y'all? Oh, this has been great. Like, everyone's just making an amazing job. Like, prepping-wise, gameplay-wise, it's just been impressive. And it's also, like, great to, like, like a great feeling because of the start of the season. Because we started like with a loss and a tie, if I remember correctly. So like pulling off four week wins in a row is just like amazing, and it puts us in a great spot for playoffs. Yeah, you mentioned the the beginning of the season, and I remember very specifically. Um, I think the first Scarlet Violet match of of our UPL was Thiago Nunes playing, and uh, he brought out the he brought out the Papagayo. He brought out the Papagayo, right? Week one, um, alongside some other like more interesting takes, but Papa Guy is the one that everyone remembers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we can talk a little bit more about that. So, so LPZ, you are uh, one of the the Scarlet Violet slots uh, for the Deranged Hustlers. So, how how do you think your team has gone about prepping for the current gen slot? You know, there are obviously three sets of Scarlet Violet plus the best of three slot. Um, so, yeah, what what has like kind of prep been for that? What's been like the culture? Whether that be like team building or like helping testing, just Give us a little bit of insight in all that. All right, like there's like a lot of help going on the, in our chat. So like we are excelling in prep. Sometimes we are struggling with some matchups that we are still figuring out. But like there is still like uh, activity. Like it's the main thing going around, you know. So there are very capable uh, builders in our team that can just like adjust the matchups really like uh functionally you know so yeah we are doing good like also about the papagayo thing like it started with sentu actually like really wow. i don't remember yeah it, it started with sentu because i don't remember it was like pre-season and i i don't actually remember but something like sentu uh, mentioned it about uh what's the name of the month because I already uh, referred I, to I, I don't know. We, we, we call it Papagayo. <laughs> we just call it Papagayo yeah, yeah. all the time. I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> no. I, I don't even remember the name now because I refer to it as Papagayo now. Like, it's done. So it started like like that. And Nunes found it funny and just decided to load it. Like, Yeah, I mean, the crazy part is, like, that team... Um, what was like kind of filled with a bunch of that because I think it was Papagaya. I think there was like Avalug Hisui on that team or something. Um, and there's like something else. Sure. It, it looked really silly. And, you know, Thiago did end up losing that match, but it was really close. Like, I think he got a little bit unlucky if they're like a crit or a miss or something that if that had not happened, he would have won, which would have been crazy. You know? like, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great thing, right? Because, I mean, Papagaya really has kind of become the, the mascot for your team. Uh, deranged hustlers, you know, it, it has hustle <laughs> as the ability, you know, just it, it's kind of funny how how all that had turned out. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of uh, kind of funny, so, you know, you mentioned the activity in, in the team chat. Um, is there anybody that you would point to specifically on the team that is really bringing the energy, whether that means like, you know, kind of being a funny player, just keeping everyone's morale high? or just like, you know, spurring on activity in, in the chat? Is there anyone you could point to specifically who, who does that for y'all? It's tough because there's like certainly multiple like pieces in our team that have been contributing with like the vibe in general, you know? Yeah. So like I specifically, I ex sorry, I specifically want to shout out my, my boys, uh, Flamingo Pokemon and uh, confident oyster there's they've been helping like a lot so i think it's it's just right to like give them to give them that you know yeah absolutely i mean coming into the draft um you know 
Flamingo was was one of kind of the big question marks whether or not uh, his kind of like creative building style how that would translate to tournament play. But as we've seen so far, I mean, he's what two and zero, one and zero at this point. Um, he's undefeated, I know, uh, which is which is great. Mm-hmm. Fantastic performance from him in Oyster. You know, some extenuating circumstances happened, so so he was a late addition to the team. Um, and it's great to hear that both of those guys have been like really big uh, contributors to like the vibe and just like the team culture and stuff like that. You love to hear that, right? Um, yeah, you know, and not only that, because uh, when they need to step in, you know, like sub in for someone like happened, I think, twice with Lime, which yeah. uh, both had to step in and they just won their game, you know, so like they're doing great. Like they're, they're, this is a great season for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, speaking kind of back into like the tournament gameplay type thing. So when you are approaching a week, right, when it comes to like prepping and actually playing, are there any like, uh, what are the kind of the steps you take to, to prep for that? Like whether that's um, just like if you do, if you like get a scout or you just load something you're comfortable playing with, like, like wh- how do you approach uh, kind of coming into a week and, and needing to play a game? Honestly, there are some tours that I just bother more about like feeling, you know, like not specifically uh, rely on scout, but I do like having scout and just like info in general. I do like uh, watching replays to see like how I need to approach some uh, games, not only matchup wise, but like the style they play, you know. So, yeah, it's kind of like a mixed bag, you know. Oh, but yeah. uh, above above all else, it's more it's like you have to feel the type of aura, like winning aura of the team, you know. Because if you don't trust your team, like how are you gonna play? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a team tour, right? So you know, one win is important, but at the end of the day, the team has to like you know kind of step up, uh, make sure you can secure secure that four for the tie or five for the win, you know. So definitely, that makes a ton of sense. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, speaking yeah. of the kind of games that have happened so far is there any game that sticks out in your mind as something that you thought you played like especially well um just kind of your highlight game of the season yeah there there's a game like i think i it was a bit more different you know i had to approach uh, a difficult matchup like playing aggressively and it was i think week five versus mana i think i yeah. i did good there absolutely um, we actually we actually have that replay pulled up. So um, if you want to kind of just take us through this step by step or whatever, um, like some key turns that you thought were happening. I mean, I, th- I think everyone would appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Um, cool. um, can you see the replay so, by the way, on my screen? I have think I should have shared the screen and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can see that. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to have this set playing on slow and you can kind of just like talk us through what you're thinking about. So, uh, versus band mana, iron fisters. Um, what do you think on like, on like lead, right? You see the team, you see Cresselia, Suicune, all them goons. And and what are you thinking in your head? How, how do I get through this? All right. So I actually like the the lead was one of the toughest uh, part of all like this matchup, you know? Because both Crook and Neuvern leads were very like like likely, because of course that the team man is using is an offense. So I I think like Thunderous was my only possible lead, my only good lead, you know, because everything mm-hmm. else was at risk of like being vulnerable to something. Like uh, definitely not. Um, uh, Cyclers are because that would give many stuff like free setup. Uh, my crew was not that bad of a lead, but like it's scarf, you know. So that I don't want to get knocked by his opponent, like uh, knock. So yeah, I just think Tun was my only possible lead for this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. So let's hop yeah. right into the game. So like you mentioned, um, we have Thunderous leading for you, and then we have Crocodile for the other guy. So kind of just walk us yeah. through, what, what are you thinking now? How, how are we going about this? Yeah, I just needed, like, I just needed damage on anything I could get. And, like, Rook especially was a really nice thing to get damage from, because that means my own Rook has, like, 
can put in more work, you know? I can click and uh, knock more freely. So here I, I made a good call, like Volt Switch. It, it was like obvious he wasn't gonna sack his crew because he won a rocks still. So yeah, mainly because he knocked my thunder. So like getting rocks was like huge, but it was tough for him to get an opportunity to get an up. So yeah, Crook is back. And I think, I actually don't remember what I did following. Yeah, Cyclos are. Just because, like, uh, rocks for him was just too big and I wanted to not give him free rocks, you know? Uh, Cyclos are here. He made a good call and did, went did, to this, which made it, like, very hard because if it was Terragrass, I lost on the spot. I literally lost on the spot. So here, I, just, I, I had to pray, basically. <laughs> and go crook and like pray he was terra fairy which he was and i got the play right because i'm gonna gunk like and on its face yeah Thanks absolutely for... i mean armor armor rouge is like one of the scariest mons to look at like at all times because you don't know yeah. what terra it's gonna be you don't know if it's like a weakness policy set sometimes you see on hyper offense um just like definitely one of the one of the big threats in the tier yeah yeah, for sure, for sure. It's like in this matchup specifically, it was the scariest thing to face. Yeah, but absolutely. It wasn't the the only, you know. There's Suicune, which was tough to uh, have a Rever Room. If I got like um, either unlucky or just uh, didn't take care enough, I would have lost too. Here I got a, a lucky dodge. But yeah. Not that it would matter a whole lot, because I would still get a uh, pair off, and I have ways to play around it when, while it is paired, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Broke its balloon, which is also cool. Makes my crew be able to revenge kill it. And here I think I go Jirashi, because I'm Encore, so I'm not scared. And he, he wasn't going for high horsepower there, so... It's fine. Um, yeah, and there we yeah. see the Encore. I mean, I, I think this is one of... I feel like Encore is almost kind of standard on Jirachi now, but I feel like people still don't really give it uh, as much respect as it deserves. I mean, coming in and being able to stop, like, you know, Parrot River Room here, or even, like, Slowbro, Suicune, even, if it, like, decides to try and call Mind on you. I mean, I think it really is kind of an yeah. underrated pick. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So here's the scary part. Two. <laughs> so yes. we just U turn because, like, I'm faster anyway, so Encore there doesn't make sense. I hope it's not sub, but of course it is because it's paired with uh, Chrysalia, so it doesn't make sense if it's not sub. Absolutely. Um, here I think I just start, I just click U turn into Roch again to Encore because, like, I, I don't have anything to break it sub. Right. Yeah, and here we see again. I mean, Jirachi with the Encore is super valuable. Um, you have Suicune going for Calm Mind there, and it's, like, not an issue yeah. anymore. Yeah. Like, his Calm Mind was kind of risky, because if I had Draco, I didn't reveal anything, you know? If I had Draco, I would, I would be able to uh, break the, the sub and knock afterwards, which would just, like, end the sweep, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but it is what it is. I just Encore. And, like, as much as Encore Jirachi is good, I it's not reliable into Kun too much because Kun just protects and there's pressure going on. And you have True, just, pressure. like, yeah, you have, like, two Encores to pull it out. Or if you get Red right, you get, like, a three or, or if you're a god, you get four. <laughs> So yeah, I took the opportunity to go Gengar because I'm nasty blood. Um, here I think I nasty blood only once, as he's wanting to protect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what what do you think um, about like different Gengar sets in the meta right now? Because I know kind of in the earlier iterations of, of Scarlet Violet, Gengar was normally found with like a Specs or a Scarf, just like a choice item, right? 
but you know, mm-hmm. lately we've been seeing a lot more like setup or even like encore, uh, maybe T spice in some forms, uh, like paralysis hex sets. Like, like, how do you feel about Gengar right now? Gengar is doing really good right now. Like, I think that set versatility, you know, uh, mm-hmm. can just like catch any check like. Sleeping. He has a lot of terrors to click to. He can do like terror fighting with focus blast. He can do terror fair. He can do. I, I, I've even seen like terror normal. Um, and yeah, there's encore to just punish uh, passive play. You have. There's like a lot of tools to catch any check he has, you know? So yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's a great mod. And that, that's kind of why I wanted to pull it out. Because I also didn't have used it like uh, in any other week. Yeah, for sure. And then we just see, I mean, the Gengar does go down, but it traded like over half on the Suicune. So, you know, def- definitely, yeah. I think, worthwhile in that situation. It would, it would be, it'd be even better because uh, he got a double protect on when I attacked first. So I, it would have been like even more, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's fun. Like, I, at least I get to do damage and break sub. So I have to, I got a knock here. So I'm doing good. Like I'm comfortable at, at where I'm at. Yeah, and here we see Reverberm coming in. Um, you know, obviously mm. Suicune probably wants to preserve those lefties. That at this point, that's kind of the win con for for mana. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, now you you kind of established a you know an advantage, I'd say. So so, what are you thinking about how how am I going to win this game? How am I going to bring this home? Oh yeah. My plan on this final turn, final turns were like uh, sweep with Moxie Crook, you know. Like I have all everything done, uh, and to make this plan like possible, I gotta like not kill this Reverend. The only risky part is if he hard switches to Cress, because then it would be tough. Uh, Suicune Queen would would have subbed on my slow bro and it would get like very very hard to deal with, deal with it. So yeah, I future side just so it doesn't get out of control and like start boosting to plus six, you know. Yeah. And I let my slow bro die. Simply as uh, simple as that. So here I just go crook, which just spend ox and I get moxie boosts and pretty much ends the game. Yeah, I mean, Scarf Crook is, is definitely something also um, that we've seen, certainly, but is not really... I, I feel like we see, you know, maybe a Stealth Rock variant um, a little more often as, as like, kind of a, co- a more common option, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's really cool to see, like, just Moxie Crook here doing... Uh, putting in work. I mean, knockoff killing Suicune there from 54%. I mean, yeah, and that's the end of the game. So, yeah, an impressive win. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was LPZ's uh, self-acclaimed highlight game of the season. Um, otherwise, do you think there were, was there a week now that kind of stood out to you that was like, okay, this this was a really important week. Um, we really got to get up, uh, kind of put our best foot forward and try to win it, like versus any of the teams that you've played so far. Um yeah, well, what was like the most memorable week for you overall? That's a tough one. Like that, there were weeks that were like closer to others. Like the the week where I win versus Mana was like versus great players. So that's basically the factor that puts like any bit of pressure on us, and because we just want to like clinch our way to playoffs, but. A specific week that I remembered most. There were like I think week three, which was our like first win week win, which it was very very close. It was like five four, and I think Gil clutched for us, you know. So I think that's the most uh, memorable I can get right now. Okay, cool. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, and that kind of brings me to the the end of kind of my questions I have for you. Um, is there anything that you want to say, uh, just like in general, about RUPL or, you know, about your team that uh, maybe I didn't touch upon? Yeah, I've just been loving this season. Uh, it's always like a 
a massive joy to team up with my friends, you know. Uh, I've been teaming up a lot with Sirius, uh, Berardo, Thiago Nunes. So it's just been like a very fun season. We managed to gather a very fun team too. Like it's a vibe in our chat. I, I've been loving it. So it's it makes it that a um, differential from like other tinters I've been playing, you know. But so this makes me like a more special one. So I hope I really hope we win another one. I I know we won last last year, but like getting two in a row with my friends, it's just like. It's just the best experience I can get in this website, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I right, think cool. I just want to give, like, I just want to shout out my entire team. Like, uh, they're amazing. Like, everyone has been putting in work. Uh, there's not a single one that is, like, uh, inactive in our chat. Everyone has been, like, carrying a lot in all of their uh, slots. So, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to them. We love to hear it. Um, all right. Well, if that's all, then uh, thank you, LPZ, for coming in, managing this sit for this this interview, this player spotlight. Uh, thank you to all our YouTube viewers uh, for coming, sharing the time of your day, um, sitting down and, and listening to us. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for more player spotlight interviews and uh, are you recaps and all that good stuff. Nah. Uh, yeah. Peace. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me, letting me participate on this. Yeah, love to have you, LPZ. All right, goodbye, y'all.